Hi, my name is Dave Klappenberger and today we're going to talk about how to get, how to paint your kitchen cabinets and have them look basically factory finish without using a sprayer. I've been doing kitchen cabinets since the early 90s. I've learned a thing or two because I've made a ton of mistakes, but I have a great system that I think is easy for you to implement whether you have experience or you don't without spraying because sometimes it's just not practical for us to be able to spray the kitchen cabinets. Perhaps you live in a condominium. Perhaps you don't know how to use a sprayer and you don't want to rent one. You don't want to buy one. You don't want to figure out how to use it. You just want your kitchen cabinets a new color or get rid of the wood and have it painted to whatever color your heart desires. And this video is going to show you how. Let's get started. The first step is you have to clean the cabinets. The cabinet doors and drawers, take them off. They have plenty, plenty of oils and food stains and drips and coffee stains. These things are a mess. They've been up for 10 years. They haven't really got a good cleaning before. They certainly need it. You can't skip this process, this step. And you want to use a good degreaser. It could be crud cutter or simple green. I'm going to use simple green. I want to give them a, a good cleaning before I sand. I don't want to sand and sort of work that grease and oil into the cabinets. I want to get that off first. These cabinets are a bit unusual in the sense that they have a little bit of chipping paint and they also have glazing. Uh, that will need to be addressed. What I'm going to do is I'm going to sand these cabinets with the palm sander, try to smooth out the paint as smooth as I can. I might have the Bondo and then uh, the glazing, I'm going to have to do some glazing uh, at the end, which I am not a pro at. This is not going to be a video on how to glaze. I've gone over with a palm sander um, with some 120 sandpaper, 120 grit sandpaper, and then I want to go over with some 240 to help you know get a little bit smoother and work a little bit in these corners where my sander couldn't get to. Okay. You just need to give the, the paint something to grab onto. That's the whole point. So you could even go in swirls like this. You just put just so lightly and use you know a, a 180 or a 220. I'm using a 240 here. Um, but like you know, and, and when I was trying to smooth this out, I was using a 120 to get in here, so sort of like that. And a couple things about vacuuming is vacuuming really gets the dust out of the crevices where a tack cloth wouldn't get, where a brush wouldn't get, and press a brush just throws it up into the air. Every step I'm telling you is important. Um, I'm not just giving you stupid steps to take just to play it safe. It's really important to make sure everything is dust free because your cabinets, if they're not, when you paint it, that dust, is, you're going to feel that dust when it's done. It's not going to blow off just as the paint's landing. It's going to get encapsulated underneath your paint. That's a real pain in the butt to get it off. It only takes two minutes to vacuum this thing, make this thing nice and clean, and then to go over it with a tack cloth. So let's just. I promise you, I'm not telling you any stupid steps. Everything I'm telling you will make the cabinets come out looking really, really nice. See, here's a little bit left on there. That's all that stuff would be, would affect the final sheen or the smoothness of it. This is, this is going to be nice. Look, I know this video is how to get near factory finish without using a sprayer, but I didn't say a spray can. We are going to put the, the primer on with uh, a spray can, a shellac primer. Shellac primers are awesome. Can you use other primers? Yes, you can. Could you use a latex, an oil primer? Of course you could, but the shellac primer works the best. So it's going to last the longest and be the most durable. If you've never used a shellac primer before, you want to start not where exactly you want to paint, but outside of that by a couple inches and then pass through the end of the cabinet for here, for example. Do the edges first. Don't start with the flat surfaces, so get these edges, the grooves first. Go around nice and easy, going past um, the cabinet and starting before the cabinet. 
Once you get the flat surfaces done, and all, or I'm sorry, once you get all the grooves done, now we're ready to go ahead and start doing the flat surfaces. But if you start with the flat surfaces, you run the risk of having drips and runs because you'll be trying to get those detail spots and now you'll have too much on other areas. It's as easy as to start before and go past the cabinet and look at that. Isn't that beautiful? That'll be dry in about 10-15 minutes and ready for a light sanding. Okay, so we primed the cabinets, both sides, and they're dry. We're going to give them a light sanding. Then we're going to vacuum them and tack cloth them again to get them uh, factory smooth. Just a light sanding, don't need much. All right, it's time to go ahead and put the top coat on. We are going to be using a Benjamin Moore product called Inselex. It is for cabinets and trim and doors. It is an enamel urethane. They, typically, when you see the word urethane, it means that it's it's stronger than your normal acrylic paint. Um, I'm adding some latex conditioner to the cabinet grade paint. Why? What does it do? It actually gives you more working time, makes the paint easier to work with, and because it has more working time, it has more. It's going to dry a little bit slower, which we don't like. But what we do like is that because it's drying slower, the, the, the brush strokes have more time to level out and give us that near factory finish that we've been talking about. So we're, we're gonna do the back side of the cabinets first because if we um, flip it over, when we flip it over to do the other side and we think that it's 100% dry, if there's any boogering up, at least it's on the back side of the cabinets and not the front. So do the back side of the cabinets first when you do the cabinet door, you want to do the, the inside first, the most difficult areas first. And otherwise, you're going to be repeating your steps. What do I mean by repeating your steps? Well, if we did this flat side first, right? Let's just say I got this nice brush strokes, just absolutely perfect right in here. And I'm happy with the way this is looking. Well, I want to booger it up. Now, if I have to go back and do this and get back over here, I'm going to have to redo this again. So always do the detail stuff first. And the detail stuff on this is just all these edges. Just nice and easy. Let these brush strokes just do their thing. Nice and smooth. Look at that. I'm going to go ahead and do these edges here. Also, one great big piece of advice is get a brand new beautiful brush. This isn't a brand new beautiful brush, but it is a great brush. It's a Wooster brush. Just don't skimp on the brush. You can't get a nice job from a, a rough coarse hair brush. Get a brand new brush. They're $13. The extender's $10. These little, the, the tack cloths are 3 or $4. I mean, these, these extra tools that you'll need to do a great job Aren't, don't cost much money at all, and they make all the difference in the world. Life's too short to get shit brushes. It's like drinking cheap beer. You're never going to drink a beer. Get a get a good beer for crying out loud. I guess that's the best analogy I could give. Come up with. I have to work on a better analogy. There you go. How nice that looks. Wait till it dries. It's going to self-level even better. We talk always about sanding it with 220. This is a 500 grit sandpaper. Uh, not easy to get, unfortunately. You could use anything. You can sand with cardboard if you want. It's very smooth. And when you go over it, there's a big difference. Um, it, it, it makes a big difference. Uh, this is smoother than this. It's, def it's, it's, it's This is factory finish smooth. If you go over it with, with something around 500 grit sandpaper, and just, just go like that with it. It doesn't take a whole lot of sanding. And it really makes a big difference. And then again, we're gonna take a tack cloth and, and uh, get the ditties off. In fact, at first I'm gonna vacuum it. And uh, then I'll tack it off and then I'll give it another coat of paint. That'll be the last time I have to sand this. This is as smooth as, as anything will possibly get. If you're going to be getting 
um, new knobs or handles and you need to fill these holes in. Use an epoxy wood filler. Do not use a spackle or regular wood filler. They shrink. This doesn't sh shrink. If they say they don't shrink, it's bull they shrink. So don't, um, don't use it. These kitchen cabinets came out fantastic and yours will too. Just follow the critical steps and apply the best practices and you will be amazed at how good uh, your kitchen cabinets come out. Okay, so there's at least one big thing I omitted that I need to give you some information on. Uh, before I get, talk about my big omission, I just want to say that if you're interested in franchising with Klappenberger & Son, if you like this industry, it's a great industry, give us a call. We'd love to talk to you. And uh, if not, you could subscribe so you can get more information or you can give us a like. We always like those as well. All right, my big omission was uh, I was talking about spraying the shellac with a spray can and I, if you noticed I was outside. If you're inside, do not spray the shellac with a spray can. You're going to have to get a quart or a gallon of it, get a foam roller, a moderately uh, mid-priced oil brush will be fine or an all-purpose brush will be fine. Just don't get the cheapest one because the hairs tend to pull out of the brush. The bristles tend to come out. So, uh, and it dries very quickly. Don't worry too much about the finish. It's hard to work with this stuff uh, uh, and because it dries so quickly. Just, it's okay. It sands very easily. So just put it on and uh, we'll take care of it later. Just make sure it's all covered. So I'm just going to stop at this point and just leave a list of materials over here of what you'll need. And remember, don't forget the latex conditioner. It makes all the difference in the world. And make sure you get a cabinet grade paint. Make sure you use satin instead of semi gloss or any other sheen. Um, if you want the standard cabinet grade finish, you can put other sheens on there, but satin is the standard. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this and it was a pleasure putting it together. Don't buy cheap paint brushes. Get the best. Uh, don't get a cheap brush. Get the best brush. Don't get a mid-grade brush. Get a Wooster. It's my favorite. You won't go wrong with a Wooster brush. That I can assure you. Thank you so much for watching. It's been a pleasure putting this one together. I'd love to see some pictures of your kitchen cabinets. Send them to me. Give us some comments. And uh, very exciting to, to see what your, how the outcome of your kitchen cabinets are. See you on the next one.